What's up friends? Today we are back here with the X-Way Flex ER and I'm going to review it. If you've not yet gotten the chance to check out my previous video, which was the first look and first ride, you can check that out in the iCard. The X-Way Flex ER is one of many boards in the flexible, boosted-esque street board genre. And while its power may not necessarily be the absolute top tier, it is well built, looks sleek, and provides smooth, predictable power output. With the unique option of being able to choose either hubs or belt, you can pick either hubs for a slightly harsher ride and theoretically more efficiency, or belts for hopefully a little more torque and a comfier ride. So in short, the question of this first bit is, who is the Flex ER for? Well, in my time using it, I believe it, that this board is best for a first time electric skateboard rider with a medium budget, but plans to ride a lot. The Flex ER has smooth, predictable power and uses quality components that should last until the user outgrows the board. Now, most of the stuff I say here in this review will be my own opinion until we get to the hard spec testing. That being said, I am still fairly inexperienced with the lower tier production boards, so I'm not necessarily sure of how things are supposed to be at this tier, but my time with the Flex ER has been pretty great overall, and I feel comfortable recommending it to people given my experience. Obviously, some others may have had worse experiences, some others may have better experiences, but Everything I report in this view is from me, so that's something to remember. Now, let's get into the tech specs. Inside the Flex ER, we've got a Hobbywing ESC with some of the best customizability in the field. Using the app that connects via Bluetooth, you have the ability to change several different speed modes, and this ESC is paired with a pair of two 1000 watt 160 kV 4230 size motors. These motors are connected to the wheels via a 13 to 39 belt drive and these use 15 millimeter wide HTD 5M belts. Pretty easy to find should you need replacements. Powering the board we've got a 12S 2P battery featuring Samsung 40T cells. These cells are pretty good and are definitely a step up from the various no-name brand cells that a lot of other companies use in their budget boards. One thing to note is that the 40Ts may suffer from the well-known Samsung battery drift uh, problem that 30Qs and other cells have shown in the past. It's kind of a well-known thing in the DIY community. And if you don't know what that means, it just means that over time, their cells tend to degrade a little bit more unevenly than something premium like the Molly Cell P42A. Now, I don't expect most people will have problems, but when you do small P groups like 2P in, in this board, you have a higher chance of experiencing that degradation due to the higher discharge per cell. With this board being a little bit of a lower power number, probably not gonna have many problems, but I thought you should know about it anyway. This battery is paired with a 200 watt charger in the box that has a three pin proprietary connector on it, or I think it's proprietary anyway. It has a three pin plastic connector and appears to be made quite well. It has no fan and only heats up a little bit during the approximately two hour charging process. This board weighs in at approximately 20.8 pounds according to my crane scale. This does differ a little bit from the number on the X-Way site, but I'm guessing that they weighed it without wheels. So with the default wheels on here, it's about 20.8 pounds. Still easy to carry under the arm, although I do prefer a mall grab. The Flex ER comes in at about 39 inches tip to tip with a wheelbase of 32.5 inches. The deck is about 9.5 inches wide at the flange and tapers down to 8.75 inches in the middle. Next up, we've got the remote and customization. The X-Way Flex ER comes with a very basic remote featuring a thumb wheel, a tiny screen, and a single multi-use button, along with a USB-C charge port, which is a nice addition. This remote gets by and is quite comfortable, so I do quite like it. It's compatible with gloves and with non-gloved hands, and it's probably one of my uh, favorite shaped thumb wheel remotes that I've tried. Now, 
there are several functions that you can activate using this multi-purpose button and I've gotten rid of them down here. Pressing it once will change ride mode, so one through four, and you can configure those in the app. Pressing it twice will change to cruise control mode, so you uh, have the throttle up, double press it, and then three times will change your direction of ride, which is either forwards or back. And then six times we'll change it into speed limit mode, which would be like if you're handing it off to someone else. Turn on speed limit mode by pressing the button six times and you can select from three different options. On the remote screen, you can see board battery, remote battery, the speed you're currently traveling, your direction of travel, and the ride mode. I'm not gonna go too much more into remote configuration, so if you wanna know about the rest of it, Xway has a great tutorial on their website that you can view at your leisure. As for the configuration of the board itself, let's take a quick look at the app. The Xway app may be downloaded from the Play Store or the App Store and has tons of useful features. It does have quite low ratings though and definitely has some improvements that could be made. For example, why do I have to connect to my device every single time? Can't it just auto connect? Your board has to be on first of all. <laughs> so go ahead and turn it on real quick and then it will show up in the device list. And you can connect to your board. And here you'll have your dashboard with your miles run, uh, ESC temp, etc. You can connect to configure the settings. You got your safe mode. You have standby time. And you can change gears while moving, free mode, cruise mode, turbo. Uh, I just always have turbo on. Uh, you can choose if you have your hub motors or the belt drive. You can choose your transmission ratio, which I guess is 14 to 39. I think I said 13 to 39 earlier. Wait, 14 to 36. I don't know where I got 39 from. 14 to 36 is the official ratio. 85 millimeter wheel size. And then here is where you can configure all of your modes and these are the four modes that uh, can be configured when you switch on the remote and i just ride in ride mode for every uh all the time <laughs> so max everything you can upgrade your firmware and uh, there's some tutorial stuff in there as well so app is pretty useful um definitely could be improved a little bit features added etc but it's something that a lot of other companies don't have and X-Way does it quite well. The deck on the X-Way Flex ER is made of composite and that is maple, bamboo, and fiberglass. This combination gives it a good amount of flex, but not as flex or not as much flex as a super flexy loaded Vanguard. However, it is enough to provide some shock absorption on rough roads, but still provide enough strength to carry heavier riders. On top of the deck, we have a nice soft, well, kind of soft, a nice foamy grip tape with cutouts for the truck hardware. That I think is a major improvement over the first one because having to take off the grip tape to take your truck off is a little bit of a drag. One note that I'd like to make before we continue on is that the wheels that ship with the Flex ER, the standard 85 millimeter X-ray ones, are a proprietary core. They are not the standard Kegel pattern. That is, you can't use a pulley from a, for example, Orangutan 105 and put it in here. These are a smaller core with a different number of pins. So if you're going to want to use other wheels on this board, you're gonna have to get additional pulleys. And fortunately, X-Way has lots of those available, but you will have to buy them separately. Next up will be a bit of a voiceover section where I go through all of the different performance testing that I did. And then after that, we'll move on to the scores. All right, <clears throat> this is a zero to 20 test along with the 100 meter sprint. We're gonna combine these together and we will check using the GoPro data to see what times we get. Try my best to start on the line. All right, ready? Three, two, one. And bam. 
One. All right, so we're about to do the braking test on the X-Way Flex ER. I've got my tape line set up over there. Um, I got my board here and I got my first piece of tape. We're about to do four braking tests and uh, we'll see what numbers it comes out to. Oh, and this will be from 15 miles an hour to zero. Yo, what's up? This is the range test for the X-Way Flex ER, and uh, you got the standard 85 millimeter wheels on it. Battery is currently fully charged. And we're gonna go ahead and do my standard testing loop, and we'll see how far it goes. I'm kind of expecting this to get about 12 miles, so I might get stranded, but we'll see. Hopefully, <laughs> one of these days I'll have a board backpack that I can do these range tests with, but. I'm not going to record very much on this, I'll probably just check in after the first loop and I'll let you know how it's going. Alright, so we're here uh, right after the hill on the standard testing route and my rule for the testing is the first third is 15 to 20 miles an hour, the second third, which includes all the way to the top of this hill, is 20 to 25, and then the third, the, the final third, is again 15 to 20 miles an hour. Now. Starting at the top of the hill, it's a, a hill going down and then it goes back up again. Uh, at the top of the hill we had about 75% left according to the remote. And doing that hill uh, alone drained the battery down to 65% after it recovered. So, you know, cells sag a little bit and then they have to recover. So. Uh, it sagged all the way to 57 and now it recovered to 64 and now we're going to be going on the final third of the route so we'll see how this goes I'm concerned that the board will die on the second time that I try to do this hill but uh, we'll see I'll update you when that happens all right so we've completed one loop of the route and are currently at 54% and uh, I am currently sitting on the ground because well, my belts broke so I'm putting a new one on right now. Uh, I only have 12 millimeter ones, so hopefully this one doesn't break too, but small wheels and belt drive, this is what you get. So good thing I brought an extra. Anyway, I'm not super hopeful about uh, making it the second loop, especially on that hill. So we're gonna have to see what happens. All right, so we're at the top of the hill before we go down uh, to go back up again. And we're currently at 31% on the remote, and it's getting dark out, so my GoPro is kind of struggling here. But uh, I'm fully expecting to not make it up this hill. Um, either our, the battery's just going to cut out and die, or uh, we're going to be left with like 5% at the top of the hill, which is uh, not usable. So we're heading down right now, and uh, I'll see what happens. I should also mention that the first time up this hill, the board was only able to maintain 19 miles an hour fully pinned. So 
Um, I'm expecting much worse this time. battery let's see what we can sustain fully pinned i don't think we're gonna make it but we'll see still keep it 18 17 which probably is not gonna be enough to get home but we'll see all right lending off the throttle let's we'll see what the battery says 21 all right 21 percent down from 33 so that's not terrible I was expecting worse. All right, so right now I'm back at the start. I don't know if it's gonna focus. I'm back at the start of the route and we somehow made it almost all the way around the second time. <clears throat> and our board is at 19% currently, but it's also said 19% board on here for the last like mile. so not really sure what percent i'm at so <laughs> we're gonna see i'm gonna finish off the route here and then do a couple of loops until it dies completely so uh give me an update when it's dead all right well it turns out i just had to click on the screen to make it go back to normal it still says 19 percent on the board and for reference we're at 13 miles currently the end has arrived i rode a little bit extra and I was accelerating and the board is down to 4% according to the remote. So now I have to get home on this. Fortunately it hasn't shut off, but uh, probably gonna have to kick push and help. I'm gonna check the current distance that we've gone and we will count that as the total distance because at this point, the board is pretty much unusable. If you have enjoyed this video thus far, be sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers this year, so every sub counts. Now, you could probably tell by the title of the video that I've quite enjoyed my time with the Flex ER. It is not really a crazy powerhouse of a board, but it has smooth, predictable power. I keep saying that, but it is very important to know. No jerkiness, weird throttle curves, and no shoddy quality parts. In fact, looking at almost any part of the X-Way Flex ER, you'll find high quality metal or plastic formed in a nice design. Now, I wouldn't really touch a whole lot on this for the price point. It's a high tier, mid budget board. And I'm not really happy with the power of it, but maybe the Flex Pro will fill that gap for me. I think we will have an opportunity to have that on the channel soon. So get subscribed and uh, thank you to Xway for sending this over to me. If you look down in the description, I've got a code and link to where you can find this on their website. Now let's get into the exciting data stuff because that's what I love to do. So let's introduce the score section. For the scores on this board, I will be doing it the same as I did in my Rebel Kit review, which you can check out in the iCard. But first we will have the RBEM board score, which kind of focuses on the everyday aspects of the board, things you interact with and use. And then we'll have the P-Spec, which is the pure performance spec score. And that will be quite interesting. So let's jump right into it. The first part of the RBEM board score is the build quality. The build quality on this Flex ER is excellent. Almost everything is built with high quality materials that feel nice, seem like they will be quite durable, and just make the board look really sleek overall. I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10, and there's a couple things where I would improve it. The belt guards are a little bit weak, and I've already broken one of them. Um, the plastic on the remote feels really cheap. I think the remote could be upgraded for sure, and I think that's about it. Overall, it's really great. Love the look of it. Next up, the deck. The deck on the Flex ER is a composite made of bamboo, fiberglass, and maple, and for me, that combination works really well. Riding this day to day, it is quite comfortable, but over time, these flanges do tend to dig into my feet, and I think they could be even less pronounced. They do give a really good spot to press off of for carving, and I find myself carving on this board a lot due to that, so 
it still gets a relatively high score of 7.5 because I don't really have any major problems with it, but I think it could be even better on a generation three. The remote for the Flex ER is uh, pretty average. It's a very basic remote, but it does have the benefit of being quite comfortable and easily usable in many gloves. It gets the job done and I've not had any cutout issues or any weird disconnections with this remote. So it receives an average score, but respectable seven out of 10. The ESC in this board is a Hobbywing ESC and is one of the more modern generations. So it delivers an average amount of power, but it does it really well. And because of the huge amount of customizability in the app, you have access to a whole bunch of different modes and the ability to turn up and down different parts of the ESC. A lot of boards have nothing even close to this, especially at this price point. So I'm very satisfied with the experience for the price and performance in this category. So for this great performance, it gets an eight out of 10. Next up, trucks and bushings. On the Flex ER, we have their forged and CNC'd Triss trucks. These are excellent trucks. They look really good, seem very strong, and just appear really high quality. Paired with those are a pair of 90A bushings, and these bushings are some of the best that I have ever felt on a stock board. Most of the time when you get boards from uh, China, for example, in the budget range, you have very cheap bushings that just feel like garbage. And the first thing to do is take them off and upgrade them. But on the Flex ER, you probably will find yourself riding on these bushings for quite a while until you really want to tune in that performance. I really like them. And overall, the trucks and bushings get a nine out of 10 for great design and great performance. Wheel options on this board are about what you would expect from a pure street board. You're not gonna be putting pneumatic tires on this thing because it just would suck. <laughs> the power would not be enough for it. But in any case, you have the standard size Kegel wheels, you have ABEC wheels, there's tons of street wheels that you can put on here. So it gets a decent score of four out of five. The water resistance on this board is quite decent being IP55 with a IP65 rating on the connector that the uh, battery has to the board. I never recommend anyone ride their board during the rain because it's just a bad idea to mix electronics and water. But if you're ever caught in puddles or a little bit of after rain wetness, you're probably going to be fine. So for that, it gets a four out of five, uh, being a little bit higher than the Rebel Kit, which had a, a lower rating. I don't think we're ever going to see IP ratings in the 60s for boards as a whole because there's so many parts, but you never know, we'll see. Now, let's talk a little bit about customer service. I'm not really one who uses customer service a lot, so a lot of what I've got from this is uh, community feedback. And, you know, as many foreign companies go, tech support can be a little bit tough to come by and uh, often quoting long lead times, unsolved issues, and you know, wanting to ship things back and forth and pay for shipping, it just gets really complicated. So rating the customer support category can be very difficult because some people will have horrible experiences and some will have great. There are companies that have excellent, excellent tech support, like Hoyt, for example, that you always get a response and you always get a solution. But for Xway, I'm not sure I can guarantee that exactly, but in my communications with them, they've been super great. Of course, biased because, you know, they send me product, of course they want to look good. But overall, I think the general consensus of X-Way tech support is decent, but not stellar. So I'm gonna give this category a 3.5 out of five. And in the future, I'm going to try and figure out a way to more objectively test tech support uh, from each of these companies. So if you have any ideas for how I should test that support, shoot me some ideas down in the comments. We're on to the final category of the board score, and that is price and value. Overall, the value of this board is pretty decent. When you buy the Flex ER, you're going to get a high quality board with lots of high quality components. And I think that part far outshines some of the other budget market competitors. However, this is at the higher end of the budget market coming in at $927 as of today. And uh, that is no small hunk of cash. So if you're going to buy a board like this, you definitely want to know that it's going to be good. And overall, this board is great. I think that the range could use a little bit of help and the power could be uh, a little bit stronger, but you know, you can only get so much. And when you're under $1,000, this is a really great option. 
There are other great budget options on the market, but I don't think people will be super upset if they were to buy this and experience it as I have. So for all of that, I'm going to give the Flex ER a three out of five on the budget scale, um, mainly because there are other competitors that offer similar performance at just a little bit higher price or a little bit lower price. Bringing all these board scores together, we get a total score of 54, 54.5, and uh, that's pretty decent. Comes in just half a point lower than the Revel kit, which is not too surprising to me, to be honest, because it actually is kind of in a competing market. While the Revel kit is uh, swappable batteries and is a little bit cheaper at times, the EST performance is very similar, and I think you'll notice that in the P-Spec. So, that's your <laughs> That's your board score, so let's go ahead and move on to the P-Spec score. I found it appropriate to put the P-Spec over some riding footage. So here we are, and you can see the raw data that I got from the Flex ER testing. Uh, our acceleration was super consistent with uh, one lucky run of 7.5 seconds from 0 to 20 miles an hour. Uh, same thing for the torque, very consistent, about 8.8, uh, 8 to 8.8 .8 newton meters. And uh, for top speed, it will vary a little bit depending on your ride conditions, your weight, uh, if there's a hill, how warm the SC is, blah blah blah, um, including how charged the battery is. But on the four runs I did, I was able to get up to 27 miles an hour. I might have hit 28 on a different run, but um, that's what I got for that day. Braking, kind of average. Um, this is with the 85 millimeter wheels on flat ground, and it's a little bit worse than the Rebel kit. Again, on the 100 meter sprint, we had very consistent times of 13, 13, 13, and 12.5. Not too bad, but uh, no points to compare it to yet, so next board I test, we'll make sure to test this out. Let's talk a little bit about the full board P-Spec. Now, on the screen here, we've got laid out the X-Way Flex ER spec and the Rebel Kit spec. Now, these are the only two production boards that I've tested so far for this, but I will be getting more to test soon, including ones from X-Way, so uh, get subscribed for that, because that will be very interesting. And uh, let's go over the numbers here real quick. For the acceleration, we ended up with a best time of 7.5 seconds. A best torque of 8.8 .8 to 5 newton meters, a best top speed on my testing day of 27 miles an hour, a best braking distance of 32.8 feet, and a range of 14.3 miles. That all comes out to a total of 27.7 points, and that is calculated using a weighted formula, and uh, it's a little bit confusing to explain, but it works so far and I'm probably going to be tweaking it in the future. I will have a video coming out in the near future testing all of the X-Way boards that I'll be getting and uh, I'll do a little bit more explaining of the P-Spec in that video so stay tuned for that and uh, hopefully you find this data cool. Alright guys, I kind of already did an outro like earlier in this video, but 
I felt the need to do a final closeout of my thoughts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this huge review. I put a lot of effort into these board reviews and if they are useful to you, make sure to hit like and uh, give me a comment down below saying what you liked or things that you might want to change. Now, the Flex ER is a great board. I think it's definitely more suited towards beginner riders, people who aren't looking for a ton of power and uh, don't have the desire to go on 40, 50 mile rides. Now, if I was a beginner and I got this board, I definitely would not be upset. The high quality components and the polish of this board would not leave a bad taste in my mouth. And I say that because there are definitely some cheap boards on Amazon out there that will leave a bad taste in my mouth. You buy this board as your first board, you're gonna get addicted. And uh, then it becomes a money spending journey and it's great. <laughs> so thank you again so much to X-Way for sending this over. It's been a blast to try this out. And uh, I look forward to reviewing future boards with you guys in, the, in uh, the upcoming months. If you did enjoy this video, thanks so much for staying all the way to the end to hear me say this. And uh, stay safe, keep on riding, and peace out.